The middle schoolers got a special treat this year as a few of the University of Mary basketball players came down to show off a few of their moves. The golf pro here suggests that you take a few lessons before coming out. As you can see, I need a few more lessons myself. Fast forward just four years later. This brand new state-of-the-art facility is the new home to the Shiloh Christian Skyhawks. Now a big part of the Demon's success this season is the physicality on their defensive line and I'm standing with the two anchors right here. We have Stanley standing at 6'4", 200 pounds and we have Thomas standing at 6'2", 230 pounds. Now Friday is a game day for the Century football team so typically Dominic will miss soccer practice but his friends on the soccer field don't mind. In fact, they're his biggest supporters. Welcome back, everyone. So, Jason, pretty crazy finish for the Vikes today. Yeah, wacky ending. You guys will have to check this out. <laughs> it's been a long season for the Vikings. At just two in, you know what? There's no need to even get into specifics. But with all of their struggles, there is a silver lining, ruining their arch rival season on their home field. This is the 107th meeting with the Green Bay Packers. The University of Mary's men's basketball team is coming off a pair of down seasons, but there are reasons to be excited up on the hill this year. Triple H state playoffs start tonight, and undisputed favorites is certainly the Bismarck Demons. The two-time defending state champs host West Fargo at 7, and our Lee Timmerman is live at the bowl with Demons head coach Mark Gibson. LT, what's going on? The Mystics men's and women's basketball teams were in action today in the Thunderbird Classic at the United Tribes Technical College. Let's start with the men. BSC was taking on Kanks Deska's College out of Spirit Lake, Minnesota. Early on, it's a one-point game. The Mystics go inside to Matt Karuma, and he finishes at the rim for the bucket. Later on, more from Karuma. He gets it in the post, and he hits the nice turnaround jumper off the glass. Soft touch. Mystics go up five. Now, Jacob Knife, he takes the three from the top of the key. Justin McLeod, the Botano native, follows up with the miss for the score. Now we see more from McLeod after that tip-in. He shows his deep range. He hits one from the wing. Give me all three of those. And BSC, they go on to win by a score of 118 to 93. That's right, LT. Now, Midnight Madness is a celebration of the tip-off to the college basketball season. It goes on at colleges across the country, and it is no different here at University of Mary. Now, I'm here with men's head coach, Jevin Buddy. Now, Jevin, tell me what you guys are doing tonight to get the fans involved and uh, celebrate the tip-off of the season. Well, it's an exciting time of the year for us. Like you said, it's uh, going on throughout the country, and tomorrow's the first official day that we can start practice. So uh, between us and the women's program, we have a lot of new faces on both of our teams. So it's an opportunity for uh, uh, our students and uh, other people in the community to, to see the new faces that we've added this year. Okay, now I believe you have 11 new players this year. They're behind us, Duncan, having a good time. Tell us a little bit about what they're going to bring to the team this year and your expectations for them. Yeah, we added quite a few new guys after the, the season we're coming off of last year and we're really excited about our bunch we added uh, six freshmen uh, and then we added five junior college players um, so we're, we're thrilled about the the athleticism and the talent that, that each one of them bring and you had those guys with the the three seniors that we have coming back with Mike Johnson Mark Musangai and Jalen Jaspers and and we're just thrilled it should be a fun night we got a lot of prizes to give out to the to the students so uh, hopefully our guys have a lot of fun before we buckle down and get going tomorrow awesome well thank you and that's it here from the Hill. Looks like it's going to be an exciting time for the men's and women's basketball season. Back to you, LT. All right, thank you very much, Jason. The Bison, they've had a pretty eventful season thus far. Upsets, ESPN game day, comebacks, there's been a lot to take in. But today may be the day that fans look forward to the most, homecoming, where they welcomed in Missouri State to the Fargo Dome. This is the 93rd annual homecoming game for North Dakota State. Early on in the first quarter, no team could score on his first possession, but Wapiton's very own Ryan Smith gets things started here. He makes a couple people miss and returns at 85 yards for the TD, and the Fargo Dome is going crazy. Later in the first, Adam Kellers puts them up 10 with a 33-yard field goal. Now we go to the second quarter with the score 10-6. to Kiera Harris, he drops back for Missouri State, and he finds Julian Barton for the 65-yard touchdown pass. I'm sorry. The Bears go up 13-10. We take another look at that play. Harris just gets it off while being hit by Grant Olsen, and you see Burton making the nice grab and the diving leap to the end zone. 
But that would not last long. Brock Jensen, he strikes fast. He goes deep and finds an open Zach Bra. They were picking on the backup corner there. And he's taken down at the two-yard line. Sam Ojori, he finishes the drive off on the very next play. Two yards out. 17-13 Bison, and they go on to win 41-26. Brock Jensen, he had 312 yards and three touchdown passes. 2011, Napoleon won their third state championship, and Trent Fittick was a key contributor as a wideout. Receiver caught, touchdown, Trent Fittick. But the Imperials were hit hard that year by graduation, and head coach Kelly McCleary asked Fittick, his most polished returner, to make the switch from wideout to quarterback. It wasn't too hard. I played quarterback when I was in junior high, and so coach wanted me when I was a sophomore to play wide receiver, and I was cool with that. And then stepped up and been the quarterback the last two years. McCleary has been impressed with Fiddick's transition and believes his athleticism has added an element to the offense. He's been a great quarterback for us. He's not as much of a thrower as our past quarterbacks have been, but he's a good dual threat quarterback back there. He can run the ball, he can throw the ball, and if we want to, we can still spit him out as a receiver every once in a while. Fiddick's success on the field makes it easy to think it was a seamless transition for him but his teammates saw firsthand the work that went in behind the scenes. I think it's been a big change for him, but he's a talented kid. He can take on a lot of different positions, and uh, he's done a very good job at it. He, uh, he carries the team pretty good with that. One thing that comes along with playing the quarterback position is being a coach on the field, plus leading your teammates off of it. And Fedek has assumed that role as well. Trent's been an excellent leader. He, um, he really carries the team. You know, when you think of one particular person to be our leader, it's Trent, you know. He, uh, he really brings us all together, gets us focused when we need to be, and uh, yeah, I would say he does an excellent job at that, and we're really lucky to have him. Fedex says the key to the Imperial success this season will be improving as a passer. The running part, I think he's gotten that down. For NBC North Dakota Sports, I'm Jason Dumas.